Hi friends! Today I'm going to be customizing this Dracula doll from Monster High into a spooky pastel clown theme for Halloween. I'm so excited! I love Halloween. Let's get started. Okay, so first here is my concept art. I will follow it very loosely. I'm going to start by brushing out her hair because this hair didn't have any glue in it and I want to save it for a later project. I always save the hair for later projects because, first off, I use yarn for most of my hair instead of synthetic hair like this is, but I like trying to do synthetic hair from time to time just to practice. Cut as close to the root as possible, and yes, again, I am using my bonsai scissors. After doing this, I decided to wipe off her factory paint with some acetone before taking off the head. I really couldn't go downstairs at that point in time, so I didn't have access to boiling water. But now I do, so I put her head in the boiling water, and after about a minute and 30 seconds, I pop it off, shielding my hand with a towel. Now I pull off all the excess hair from her head by just sort of sliding my pliers along. I thought that there would be some glue in it like there normally is, but there wasn't, and that was a really nice surprise because getting glue out is such a troublesome task. Now there's this pile of excess hair fluff, which is really gross, but not as gross as if it was filled with glue. Now I decided to wipe off her head factory paint with a acetone soaked piece of fabric and this way it looks more finished. When I was pulling out all the hair, I accidentally stabbed my pliers through the part in her hair, like through the holes, so I have to stitch it back up. For this, you want to make sure you double up your string and use a really strong needle, because as I did before filming this part, I broke the string. That was really annoying. But this takes a little bit because, first off, the head isn't soft and squishy at this point, and especially since I accidentally broke the scalp right next to the part, or right on the part I mean, and right next to like the forehead, I have to be really delicate to not stab through the actual forehead, which was kind of difficult to do. After working at it for a little bit, I get the needle to go through properly and tighten the string down. I keep pushing the needle through and stitch it a couple more times. As you can see, I was having trouble getting through a not broken hole, but eventually I got most of it through. Unfortunately, it made this little knot. Knots are kind of annoying when doing this because they don't go through the head very well because, like I said, the head is really thick. So you want to try and snip off as much as possible without breaking the string. This made me nervous because this is how I broke the string last time. I pull at it to make sure it won't break, and it doesn't, magically, somehow, so I pull it through the head, which takes quite an effort from me pulling with pliers, instead of somehow giving myself rope burn with string. I don't know how that happened. But at that point, I tie it off, and when you tie it off, you want to make sure to make the tightest knots as possible, but I try to still double knot it so that then it doesn't come loose. After doing that, I take my scissors and snip as close to the head as possible without cutting the actual knot, and it will match up with the hair color later so you won't see the stitch at all. Now I paint her head in preparation for the hair, and I start with this pretty pink color that I mixed up for a previous project, which I thought was going to work, but it ended up being the exact same color as like her skin tone, which is not helpful, so I put some on the lid and then mixed it with a red. I originally thought I had put too much red in because it came out a lot faster than I thought it was going to since it was sort of a watery acrylic paint. But I mixed the color and I still thought it was going to be too dark, but then it ended up being the exact same color as her hair, which was really nice. You can see me trying to focus on the paintbrush. My camera would not focus. So I paint her head and you want to get like the whole head. If you're doing 
let's say, um, if you're doing like a tight hairstyle, like braids or like tight pigtails, you might want to leave a space in the center where you can just see skin tone because that would look more realistic. And obviously if you were making stylized edges or baby hairs, you would paint not only on the like scalp part, but for the style I was doing, I'm going to do, I just painted on the scalp. Now I move on to actual hair. I brushed out some yarn with a cat brush again, and I pull it apart into these little strings. And I'm left with a pile of strings and I do that a couple more times. I pretty much immediately broke my needle, which was really annoying. The rooting tool I'm using is, I'm not even sure what it is, it's like a little metal piece with like part of a needle with a slice cut in the eye. And since I broke the needle and I didn't have any extras, I had to make one. How you do this is you just crack off the sharp, sharp part of a needle and then you cut the eye diagonally and it should theoretically hold the hair properly. Even with the video being a time lapse, you can still see that this is taking me a long time. <laughs> and I kept having to like stop the video because my camera kept falling down and I had to go do homework at one point. It took a while. <laughs> this was a multi-hour process. You want to start by plugging around the entire like hairline to make sure to fill it in before you run out of yarn, I guess. And then you want to park, a oh, park, <laughs> part. You want to put it along the part. I can't speak today. And you want to plug it in to the center. And I stopped filming about now because it, my camera fell down and I was just so fed up with it. But here's how the finished hair ended up looking. Super poofy, super nice. After doing that, I put some glue into the neck hole and that keeps the hair in place. I brushed out her hair again and ended up shaping it up into a little troll shape, which was really funny. I thought I would include a picture. Now I spray the face and I will spray the body with some Mr. Super Clear sealant. This preps the face for pastel colors, watercolor pencils, and like I'm going to use, acrylic paints. After spraying it a couple times, I have a clean face and then I start painting the white base on it. If you want to go back to my concept art, you can see that I wanted to have a sort of gradient white mask for the clown face. But when I tried to blend the acrylic paints and the pastels to make the gradient like I was originally going to do, the pastels turned the white paint yellow, which was really gross looking, so I ended up just making it sort of like a blocky mask, which ended up looking fine. It just isn't entirely what I'd intended previously. I put on some blue and some pink to sort of blush the face and add the beginnings of the makeup, and I add some purple for lipstick, and it didn't look as good as I wanted, but that's okay. We'll fix it later. I make the eyes fully black to make them look spooky like in my concept art and then I add the sort of like clown triangles I don't know what those are called but I add the little triangles below the eyes and continue building up the sort of clownish blushing I line the lips and then continue shading in and I sprayed in between this a couple times with some more Mr. Super Clear After blushing a couple more times, I add on some highlights and some eyeshines. And that went pretty well. I had to blend the eyeshines out a little bit. They were a little bit too blocky. I don't know why this part is fuzzy, but I'm putting gloss onto the eyes and lips to make them more lifelike. I pop the hair out of its little bun and clean up the edges of the face where I accidentally spilled some powder. And she looks really cute. Now I move on to the body. I love blushing Draculaura's body because the pinks in the palette of pastels that I have mix so well 
with her skin tone. It's my favorite. Monster High doll body to blush. I paint on little triangles to give her even more of a clown-like look. I will paint the triangles purple in just a sec. I paint them purple and they look really chunky right now because I kept spilling the paint, but it's okay because eventually the neck sort of, it sort of like compresses when you put the head on and so it hides it. Now onto clothes. How I make my patterns is I just trace around like Monster High clothes and then add a little bit more space for seam allowance. I did this on a pastel purple fabric, which you can get all of these for like little patches of fabric for like $3 and it's like a yard, I think. Maybe a little bit less. But I cut out all the pieces and it takes me a little while because I kept almost going through the actual part of the fabric that I needed to use. I use a watered down acrylic paint for fray check. If you don't know what fray check is, it is basically what it sounds. It makes sure that the ends of the fabric don't fray, but acrylic paint works just fine for this on small level clothes. You would not want to use acrylic paint on like human sized clothes because that wouldn't fit properly, but that's okay. I then paint on some stripes to give her even more clownish vibes. I wanted them to have like a full rainbow vibe, but I don't really like pastel orange and I didn't have any orange paint at the time. I also didn't have yellow or blue, so I had to color those on with marker after painting on a base layer of white paint. And it ended up looking pretty good, I think, for, you know, acrylic paint. I color on the details with marker, and after that, I paint on the black to give more spooky vibes to the waistline and to the sleeve cuffs and the ankle cuffs and the neckline. I forgot to mention, but I did sew this off camera. It took me less time than it took me last time to sew things, so that was really nice. It only took me one day instead of four. So that was really great. Um, my sewing skills are getting better even though they're still hand stitching, so it takes a while. <clears throat> After I do that, I move on to making her a matching hat. I start by sort of folding a piece of fabric with hot glue into a cone cone shape and then filling it with more hot glue to make it very solid. Then I stick in a little pin, you can see it there. This pin helps you stab it into a head hole later and makes it so the hat stays in place without any string attaching it. I snip off the excess fabric with first attempting at my bonsai scissors but then I use my normal scissors. I'm not sure which one is actually sharper, one works better for fabric, one works better for hair. <laughs> I fold over the excess fabric that was still left with by hot gluing it down and it's really stiff so it's a little bit difficult and I almost burned myself because I didn't let the hot glue dry but that's okay because I didn't actually really burn myself which would have been bad. After folding that down for a while and struggling with it I end up adding on a black ribbon that I made out of some more fabric and a little black puff ball. I then paint on some white dots to the black fabric which later I will color the same colors that I put onto the clothes. I then take these shoes which I think were from another Draculaura doll and I fill them with hot glue after putting some scotch tape around the edge. Uh, this is a great way to turn normal heels into platforms. You just sort of have to make the shape you want with the scotch tape and then it makes this shape little platform bases so i snip off or slice off the edges that i did not want on the shoes anymore and i sand them down with a nail file and then i glue some black fabric around them to match the black on the hat and match the black on the bodysuit I wanted to give 
a little bit more black onto this and I will paint the like platform part rainbow colors but I forgot to film that for some reason so I'll just show a picture. After folding that over I glue all of the material down on the bottom so it makes a smooth bottom and then I glue it inside. This method I do not recommend entirely. I thought it would work better than it did. It ended up being really chunky and I had to shave it down a little bit to fit it onto the doll's foot, which was kind of annoying. After doing that for a while and trying to get it to fit and sticking it down with my pencil and with the knife, I made this. I then paint it, paint the shoes black to make them more uniform and paint the strap that was currently pink black so it all matched. <laughs> this took me a little while but not too terribly long. And here is the finished shoes with the platform base. They didn't turn out as nice as I'd like but that's okay. Now I want to make her a mallet. A mallet just seems like a really good clown thing, you know like the rubber ones that in circuses they use to bonk one another. I originally cut it in cut the hole into one side of the mallet and I thought that that was the right way to make a mallet because I didn't search up reference pictures which would have been a good idea and I was trying to figure out why it looked like a marshmallow. I smoothed it out and hoped for the best but you can see here that the stick was both lopsided and it doesn't look like a mallet. I was really confused and I just wasn't sure what to do but I kept going with it figuring if I didn't like it I could just not put it in the video. And so I painted it pink with the same pink paint I used earlier and it still looked like a marshmallow. I thought maybe making it not marshmallow colored would make it look better and that's when I realized it was the wrong way. So I put a new hole and I painted the stick black and then I put some more paper around the edge to make it look more finished and I cut out two more cardboard pieces or actually three because I accidentally sliced through one but I trace around a circle and cut out more cardboard pieces to put onto the edges and make it look more finished and then I put the stick in and after doing those things, it looks a lot less like the marshmallow it did before. <laughs> I then paint it pink, and again, I forgot to film when I put the details on. I apparently forgot to film lots of footage, footage for this video, I am so sorry. But the finished mallet looked pretty cool, I think. I put some colors and hearts on. And that is the finished doll. I decided to name her Bonnie. It seemed like a good clown name and I gave her a whole spooky vibe. Thanks for watching. I hope you tune in next time. Bye!